Hello, VOD people. Okay, I've uh, I've only lo uh, loaded a an empty project, and we're gonna give it a go and see if we can manage to build anything. So there is a uh, requirement spec of a sort that I'm uh, I'm going to follow. I'm not going to share it on screen though. I'm not really sure if the document should be public. But it's a generic project anyway, so I don't, I don't think building a project should be a problem. Um, I am going to try to deploy the uh, principles or other uh, not principles, but the stra strategies explained in Domain Modeling Made Functional by Scott Blashin. Because I I really like the idea of them, but I haven't really built anything following those uh, strategy, or not strategy, but um, following those principles or, or solutions. So that's what I'm going to try. So let's go with a new project. You're not going to see the dialogue that I just spawned uh doo -doo -doo -doo. let's do a class library let's just call it uh what should we call it it's just going to contain logic Ugh, i could call it core or something that's really cliche but it's kind of business nah logic domain App? No. I'm not gonna go call it domain. You know what? I'm just gonna call it core. <sighs> yeah, sure. Let's call it that. Okay. We're going to use F sharp on .NET 5. Yerp. Okay. Create. So my, um, ideally this should be, oh, kind of complete action. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. <laughs> So that failed for some reason. Uh, let's see. Why did it fail though? That's really weird. Well, this wasn't meant. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> let's try it again. Uh, here we go. Oh, wow, this is struggling. Okay, here we go. Um, wow, this is okay. Um, <laughs> Let's see, build tools. Uh, tool set and build. That sounds. Hello. Hello, indeed. Uh, let's see if I can actually make uh, make this work. Uh, auto detected. Yeah, that looks right. Okay. Okay, this is. Okay, it's really weird. Uh, let's see. I was about to create a project for, um, for my code, but uh, let's try that again. See if it magically works this time somehow. No. Enable 
to load project and obtain project information from MS Build. Probably the project incompatible with the current MS Build. Can't patch process starting info and .NET Core installation folder not found. Yeah, but we don't. What? Okay, let's restart the app. See if that works. <clears throat> Looks like OBS hasn't caught on. Well, this wasn't was it what I was supposed to be doing, but um, <laughs> sure. Uh, let's see if we can. Um, Oh wow, this. Writer, come on. Let's see. Okay, looks like it. It's um, well, let's see if it has um, oh, okay, probably still loading the solution, synchronous changes, right? Writer was actually quite slow. What's that all about? Okay, let's see. It's not very promising that we aren't able to add a like a class library. That's disconcerting. Let's see if we can get this more. Oh, that's that's a typo. It already exists, okay. So it looks like it's managed to create the project, just not load it, okay. Add existing project. Writer, are you okay? Are you... <laughs> wow, okay, here we go. Uh, yep. Right, okay. So we're gonna remove this, move to trash, and we're gonna add this project. Writer is really slow. That is strange. Okay. Well, it looks to be loading at last. Wow, this is really slow. Why is it like this? Oof. Okay. This is really strange, but okay. Let's just, wow, okay. Just hang on a second while I check what is going on. It's being really slow. I, I don't really know why. Uh, it hasn't been a problem before. Uh, let's see, okay. Let's restart that and see if... Uh,
Yeah, nothing too out of the ordinary there. Hmm, strange. Uh, okay, let's see if we... Who saw these? Okay, let's see. Now we should get going. So, okay, so I'm going to attempt to build something with uh, F sharp. It looks like we're finally getting here. Um, <clears throat> now, I haven't written much F sharp before, so this is going to be quite a new experience. Uh, so this is inside of a module called say, right? Uh, I don't quite remember the technical differences between modules and, in, and namespaces, but I pretty sure I remember modules are preferred in F sharp. Okay. We don't need you rainbow tables, uh, rainbow brackets. I mean, Um, I think they are preferred. So should I put like what I'm writing here inside of a module called core or is it, should I not do that? Maybe I think, okay, let's start with, let's just start with like a, Okay, we got namespace also here. Okay, I don't know. Uh, let's leave, uh, let's do this. Let's just start with like a, a um, blank slate. So in theory, this should, uh, according to the, to, to the spec I'm working from, this should actually be a web application of some kind. I might actually do that at some point, but my main focus would be to write the F sharp code because I kind of want to, try to get into that. So when if uh, I should probably pull the um, the main modeling main functional book up on my screen uh, for reference. But I remember quite distinctly, like the first step that um, Scott Vlashen did Vlashen did with when trying to kind of to determine the domain was to just write down everything or rather all the kind of data structures that are relevant. So, uh, do, 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 do. Yeah. Needs a system with the following features, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what we've got is it should be a web application. That's fine. We'll just get that. We've got employees that need to log in. And I know from reading a bit further, further down that we got multiple kind of kinds of users. <clears throat> so I think we're just going to start out with a user. Um, <laughs> I think it's type user. I think it's like this. Wow, I don't re actually remember how to define types in F sharp. Well, okay, let's ju let me just pull up the <laughs> the book in the background. Okay, let's just see. Uh, do 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 do. Uh, I pretty sure I kept it in here. Not one of those. Am I misremembering? I could swear I put it in here. Okay. Um, let me just quickly go and get that file, that PDF of that book. I think it's in sort of here, maybe. What is this sorting? Is it like, okay, that doesn't make any sense. There we go. Okay, what's the difference between these two? Let's go for a list. 
EPUB and PDF. Okay, we'll just go with the uh, PDF then. Okay, download. And just add that over here. Okay. Now that we've got that sorted, let's pull that up and have a look at the, um, the contents. Uh, do, 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 the importance, yep. Yeah. Um, did he just do code examples in just right like I remember thinking that this is such a good book and just looking through it, skimming through it now makes me want to read it again actually. Uh, let's see, here are some code examples. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yes, uh, they are. Is this where he goes through the code examples? No. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay, I see some code. Yes, those are functions. Uh, composition of types. Okay, yes, yes, okay, okay. Here we go. We need an equal sign. Wow. So yeah, um, haven't written much uh, F sharp. <laughs> uh, let's see. <clears throat> I think the convention is to use. Is it use uppercase naming on uh, Pascal casing on? property names I wonder I see that he's doing that in the book I think we'll just I think we'll just continue that trend or, or um, keep it in line with, with what he's doing for now uh, in regards to having nothing else to uh, or for the lack of anything more leading than that okay let's see we got a user let's pull up the, those requirements again we got a user. Um, by reading through the list before, I know that the user needs to have a name. It's going to be a type of string. Oh, uh, and enter completed item by uh, uh, instead of inserting a new line. Yeah, I'm okay with that. <sighs> okay. Um, I need that they need a phone number. That's going to be a, a thing. Phone. This is going to be a string. Hmm. Should it probably maybe be a? We'll, we'll get. We'll circle back to it. Um. According to domain modeling made functional, that should probably be a, a its own type called phone number maybe, which could have its own logic tied to it. But uh, we're gonna leave it like that for now. Let's not overcomplicate things before we need to. We can always clean this up later, I think. Um, and they need to have a password. So this is going to be interesting, uh, how much effort we're going to put into like a, the password security. Uh, let's just, again, make it simple for now and see how we, um, we get along. So yeah, so let's leave it uh, at that for now. I think that's a good start for a user type. Uh, the next thing, the main screen should display all equipment and tools that are available for renting slash lending. Okay, that's not really relevant for now. Uh, we just need a way to um, to display equipment. So maybe we should actually model just that equipment. So we've got something called equipment, like so. And, oh, okay. You don't have to insert anything. That's fine by me. Um, and if I scroll down a bit, I can have a look at some of the requirements for the equipment. Um, when the user selects equipment or tool, a calendar, blah, 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 that's a requirement for the visual part. Some of the equipment are free to lend for one day and then a specific rate per day from day two. So, okay, we need a, let's just call it, uh, call it a name. Uh, 
of the equipment. Um, does it need a more lengthy description? It doesn't look like it. Well, actually... They very often put extra details about the equipment in parentheses. So yeah, let's just go with details. Having that in its own field will be helpful, I think. So you there there's a running rate for for renting it, but you might be able to lend it for one day. So uh, let's just go with. Oh, oh wow. Writer is behaving very f weirdly today. White space did not insert in select blah blah blah. blah. Okay. <laughs> um, a rate. Uh, I think that we're just gonna store this as a long. Am I, is that a type? Uh, nope. Uh, int. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably fine as an int. Um, and I think rate starts at, and that's going to be an int2. So the thought here is that the this you can indicate whether the start should, uh, in, uh, or rates should start at day one or two. Huh, actually, that would be really, rate start day, yeah. Let's define that here. Uh, rate start day. And that uh, either going to be one or two. Can I write, write like this? Nope. I cannot. Uh, like this? Nope. <laughs> I'm just guessing at syntax. Um, okay, I'm looking at, like, different options. Um, I was pretty sure you could do, like, a discriminated union, I think they're called. Well... It looks like the syntax is like, oop, like this on new lines, actually. Oop, no, no, no. But that doesn't seem to work. It complains. Unexpected int integer literal in union case. Expected identifier. Okay. Rate start day. Uh, first, second. Okay. Uh, let's see. I thought you, you you would be able to kind of say like I wanted to be one of these. I might I might be confusing it with um, with TypeScript. To be honest. Let's see. Okay, just looking through the um, the Scott Lashing book. Meh. I think I might be confusing it with the TypeScript. Switching between languages is really confusing sometimes. <laughs> Especially when a lot of them have started adopting similar syntax. So they they're it feels sometimes it feels like they're just getting more and more similar syntax wise with just small differences between them and it's properly confusing. So let's see. Uh, rate starts. Uh, okay, yep. And we got the rate and which day the rate should start at. Should since you allow them to support all use, blah blah blah. That's probably. Yeah, we'll have to see. Uh, able to limit how many days it is possible to rent some equipment. Okay, so there's like a rent limit too. So let's go with rent limit. And uh, let's put that into int. Uh, the administrator should be able to add or remove equipment. That's fine. So there is administrators, which means that they're probably going to be like a 
a roll. Mm, yeah. Let's call that a user roll. Uh, that's a type called user roll. And it's either a user. Uh, nope, that's not what I want to do. Or a administrator. All right, that, that's not a reference, is it? No, it's a, yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah. Okay. The administrator should be able to run reports. Okay, so there are reports. Those are probably going to have some types of their own. Overview of which employees are lending, renting specific equipment. Right? Overview of how much individual employees owe the company. Right, okay. And that looks actually like that's the only two kind of um, uh, types, but there is like an, an, an implicit one here, which is the uh, relationship between the two. Like at some point you have to create like a, like a, uh, a reservation for the thing. A reservation, right? Which represents the, 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 well, the reservation of, of, from, uh, uh, which uh, a user of type user and a which lends some equipment equipment like so and the reservation has a start at start date yeah I think start date and that's a daytime format? No, no format. No. Wow. Offset, maybe? Nope, I'm going to use daytime. And there is an end date. Um, also, there is an example of date a commentary okay so like a, like a comment maybe looks like there there's one in the existing analog solution that they have so we're gonna yeah So those looks like that looks like the the different things that are involved. Next, I think uh, it's been a it's been a year or so since I read this book, and I haven't didn't really do anything with the knowledge once I had it. So uh, um, <laughs> I um, organizing types and files and projects, common dot types, common dot functions. Okay, yeah. Um, if you have a lot of types and you need to split them, put the shared ones first and sub them in specific one after. Okay. So let's rename this file. Let's call it types. Um... Then let's add another file. Wow, Ryder is being really slow today. Whew. This is kind of concerning. Source file. Uh, this is going to be functions. Functions. Right. Uh, blah 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 blah. Uh, don't ask again. Cancel. Yeah. So this is going to go in a module called core dot functions. Should this be in like 
module core dot types. I'm kind of leaning on what. Sure, module core oh, core dot types. Sure, let's go with that. That's probably uh, an okay way to do it. So the next thing I think we need to do here is model like the actions that is specified in here. I think that's the next thing that we do. I'm again looking at the in the book. Domain modeling with types, blah blah blah. Uh yep, that's just a Okay. Modeling with record types. Yep, that looks basically what what I was doing. Do 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 yeah, he's a, he's a bit more liberal with using special types for every case. So instead of having like like a name and a phone and all these being strings, put them, make them like if you want to represent an undefined type in F sharp, you can use the exception exn and alias it to undefined. Okay, you can then use the undefined alias in your design model. Okay, that's an interesting thought. So what he's suggesting in the book is make an undefined type like so, based on the exception thing, and then redefine your stuff. So for example, name, should there be any constraints on what a name is? Probably of some kind, like a character limit at least. A very high one, but sure, a character limit. So in theory, we should redefine redefine uh, a type called name, which might just be a, uh, well, we can just say it's undefined for now, but it's in actuality a string. Okay, can I, can I just write that it's a string? Yes. Okay. So then there's a type of phone which is also a string for now. That's fine, we can add some more uh, stuff to that later. Uh, there's a password, which is also just a string. And then we should, could do this, this, and uh, this. Okay, so we've got like name for equipment details. Model unknown types. Hmm. I'm I'm kind of worried that I'm I'm over doing this for uh, for the moment. But I'm kind of in favor of it too because I know that there's going to be some kind of validation for phone numbers. And I know if I abstract this out as a, as a separate type now, that's going to be easier to deal with later. So I'm kind of in favor of doing it like this, to be quite honest. Um, the only problem is there is now like a type name for bo both, in theory, for both user and equipment, and those are supposed to be different. And I think I can solve this by using a module, I think. Just give me a second here, and I'll have a look in the book. I'll look in the book. Mm -hmm -hmm. Yep, okay. Putting it all together, right? Yep, those look good. Okay. What if I just search for module and find the first instance? Find each component, each component comprises a number of classes or in a functional architecture of modules that contain a set of lower level of the methods and functions. Okay. So 
what I'm really curious about then, okay, blah, 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 blah. Module payments. Okay. Yeah, I think this makes sense. Okay, so making a module here good does make sense, sense, I think. So a user is a module. Let's grab all this. This is inside of the user module. This is inside of the equipment equipment mo module, like so. And then in the last case, we've got the reservation module, I guess. Reservation module, like so. Let's indent this. This is not going to work, so we need to, do we need to open the module maybe? Uh, open user. Okay, yep, yep, yep. This is progress, I think. Users are user. Oh, right, okay, yeah, 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 that, that's fine. So equipment, the equipment, okay. That works, yeah. I, I think that he does something else when... Okay, do, 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 simple type within a file. Um, mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Module, right, wait, 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 what? Um, when you're developing a model from the top down, the dependency order constraint can sometimes be inconvenient because you often want, will want to write a lower level module types below the um, higher level types, okay. In F 4.1, you can use the rec keyword at, a, at the module or namespace level to solve this. The rec keyword also lets types F sharp, who hurt you? <laughs> what are you going to do? Um, I'm trying to um, to write a, like the core logic of a simple like um, uh, renting and lending app, which I've, I've obtained like a, like a spec for, for, uh, for an app. So I'm trying to implement that in F sharp uh, using the, uh, the uh, IDs and and the, the oh, what's it called? It not um, uh, the <laughs> the the IDs um, put forth in domain modeling made functional, a book by Scott Lashin. Uh, let's see where we are. Uh, yeah, the rec keyword allows types to reference each other anywhere in the module. Okay. I'm not really sure. Oh, right. So you don't have to do it in order. Okay, that's not really. Okay, that, that doesn't really matter to me. I don't necessarily need to put them in that order. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Uh, do, 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 do. I distinctly remember. Define a module with the same name as a type. Yes, this is what I'm looking for. Blah, blah, blah. Then you create it, and then you return. Hmm. Uh, module with the same name as a non-generic type will cause an error in versions before F4.1. Blah, 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 blah. Define a smart constructor, yes, called create which then return, okay. So you just say that you want to, okay, I think I'm doing this right. Let's just leave it like this for now. I should probably read more of this book, uh, read some of this book again <laughs> to get, get back into it. Uh, let's see, does he say anything? Just around our hair, no. Module, 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 module. One does a power constructor is that you can no longer use it to pattern match and extract the wrap data. One workaround of this is to find a separate value function. Also in the blah, blah, blah. That extracts the inner value. Uh, 
blah, blah, blah. Yep, that's not accessible. We need to create it. <clears throat> and then you use the value of that one, which will let you, okay. Hmm, so this might not be desirable. Let's, uh, let's leave it like this for now, I think. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. blah. Okay, uh, yeah, let's just do it like this. I think this will, um, yeah, this is fine. I think this is preferable in the long run, but we'll have to see. Uh, let's call this name of a type string, and then a type called details of also type string array. And a uh, rent uh, limit. Uh, rent duration limit. Uh, actually, we we'll rename this to. I might be uh, <laughs> I might be overthinking this, but um, time will show. Uh, let's see, start date, which is just a date time. Let's copy this. Oh, Looks like uh, OBS disconnected. Did it reconnect or not? Hmm. <laughs> Twitch says, yeah, you're alive and the uh, something is excellent. No recommended changes. Okay. Well, OBS is claiming that we're not connected and the preview in Twitch is network error what's this huh it appears everything is not working yeah okay there we go reconnection successful okay what was that all about Not sure what that was all about. Okay. Okay, uh, moving on. Um, there's probably going to be a cut in the VOD or VOD thing in Twitch, but uh, the I'm recording locally too, so the YouTube edition will um, be complete, including my confusion about what just happened. Uh, let's see, comments? Yeah, sure, why not? This feels very much like overkill. I need to re read this book again um, to actually see what I'm doing. Because <laughs> now I'm just following it kind of blindly, and that's... Uh, not really a good way to do it. Um, uh, let's see. Does it make any good? No. Not like. Uh, blah, blah, blah. We need to use the attribute before. Yeah, okay. So he's doing something like this in in um, in his examples, yeah. Hmm. 
probably need to read over this again sometime. Okay, let's go back to the functions file as we are already. And I think there should be, they should kind of model like some of the flows that we're going to go through. So, uh, let's see. I think, for example, admin, the administrator should be able to add and remove equipment. Um, so I'm thinking we, we should start by moving from really simple functions up to the more complex ones. So I need, I think we need to kind of create like a, an, an equipment first. And the way you could do that is call the uh, create a function called create, which will let you create a, an, a, a create equipment. Uh, the way by doing this is you do create and then you need, um, a name, some details, the rate, uh, rate start, and rate, no, rent limit. And at the end, we're going to return some kind of equipment. Isn't this how we create create something? Uh, using the name. So name is going to be a name. But I'm thinking here, maybe hmm. Uh, this is probably going to be an equal sign, right? <clears throat> I should probably do some checking here to see if like name is is valid. Mm. Yeah, maybe not. Who thought? Yeah, this and this is going to be going to be great for users. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, Well, I mean, I think it's basically borrowed from OCaml, so, and I'm not really sure where OCaml got its syntax from, if it's original or if it OCaml inherited from somewhere else, maybe ML or something. doesn't know which equipment I mean, probably. Do I need to do this? No, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, the syntax is a bit different from from what you might be used to if you're used to like C-like languages. But having read like a <laughs> having having read a book and been uh, and reading some F# -sharp code from that book, or rather one and a half books actually, when I think about it. It's not that bad. Um, it it's different, but yeah, it's a uh, what's it called? Just a, like a you get used to it, basically. Hmm. How do I how do I create a name from? Okay, what's it complaining about equipment? The value or constructor equipment not defined. Uh, sure, that might be true. What do I know about creating objects, really? Uh, let's see. Get, uh, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. You know what? We're just going to simplify this. 
Let's make it simple first and then do complicated after. Yeah, that's a much better solution. At least when we're starting out with this. Uh... It's just that I kind of want it to be, <laughs> I wanted, wanted to do it like this. Hmm. How do I define that string 50 thing? Let's just have a look in here. Uh, let's see. Oh, so it just says that it defines it somehow. Oh, that's not the top of the thing, is it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, it defines it over here. Yeah, it doesn't really show how. Yeah, so it creates. Right, right. Okay. But does it explain how it arrives with it to? Maybe down here somewhere? Nope. Not that we're referring to another constructor function in the string. This is last but now. Okay, yeah, sure. It's already being used, so it's probably defined somewhere else. And this looks like it's the first reference. Hmm. Well, that didn't help. Ah, uh, okay. It's kind of annoying. I kind of want want this to to be like um. So in theory, I could say like, yeah, phone has a specific meaning. Uh, so maybe module phone number. I think. Which specifies a type called phone number. Um, oh. Which specifies a type called phone number, which in itself is basically just a string. Um, how is it that I make stuff Everything's public by default in F sharp, I think. Isn't that right? And you have to kind of make it private if you want to. Do not expose it, I think. And to create one of these, let create. You need to specify a number basically and that number uh, if number dot length is is equal to eight. It's a bit of a bad check, but we'll just go with it. Uh, return. Return a phone number of number. 
else fail with. I think you can just specify like a string. Yeah. Phone number must be eight characters. Um, yeah, this is, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is not how you write F sharp. You write this and, and then you remove this, this, and this. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, look up an object. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really know what kind of type number is. Length is not enough of a hint for it to know. So we need to, oh, we need to specify that it's a string. This is not working because no overloads match for method. Um, yeah, so I think we actually do like this I think this is the right one uh no right this is comparison in isn't it yeah I think it is wow yeah I think uh, that's comparison uh, this should be the value or constructor phone number is not de defined. Uh, that's probably because this, okay. Yeah. Okay. So this returns. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I think all this makes sense to me now. So doing this, I actually have like a simple validation thingy going for um, for phone number. Um, so instead of doing this, we're going to do this. Sorry, uh, just a second.
and we're back. Let's see, here we go. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's how we create those. Um, usually you don't want to use fail with here. You actually want to return like an option type or not, rather uh, result type, uh, which are in the, in the, um, in the standard library now in a fresh sharp. Uh, but that's a bit more advanced for now, I think. I'm still debating whether or not to do actually go through with this for this simple example, especially considering that I don't really know what I'm doing at this point. Uh, Um, I might actually just go back to doing like simple types and rather define all this stuff later. Yes, I think that's uh, what I'm going to do. Um, actually, let's, I'm just going to bring up my git client thingy in the background here. And uh, let's just do like a, uh, uh, where'd it go? Here. And this one. Open that. It decorates any, okay. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, let's see, yeah, that's probably, yeah. Initial commit. And then in the next one, we're going to do, let's just do all of these. Let's just say, um, uh, let's call it complex types, I guess. Um, or rather, let's just call it uh, a work in progress. So that's what it is. Let's create a branch. Uh, where is the, there we go. Complex types, let's call it branch. Okay. So we head back over here. We see both of them are there. And if we are on this and we just reset to that one, let's do a hard one, reset. Okay, so now we're back to, <laughs> no time with the project at all. Okay, right, right, right. Um, is the project still present in the file system though? Let's have a look. No, it isn't. Okay. So if we add a new project, you're not going to see any of this, I think. Let's see a class library. Let's call it core and slash source. Yes, I know the directory already exists. That's where you're supposed to put it there. Uh, okay. <laughs> this isn't cleanup. Manual cleanup. Where are you? There we go. Yep, yep. Let's just move that. Do this, and now it works. As it should. Let's see. Uh, 
Okay, so we're back here. I think we're just going to start off right away. Oop, or not. Start off right away. Let's call the, this one types. Rename that. We're going to do this. We're going to say module core types. That's what writer likes to do anyway. We're going to redefine the type called user, which is going to have a name of a string. He's, uh, the user is going to have a phone number of type string and a password of type string. And then we're actually going to use one of these types, which is going to be a user role, which is going to be either a user or a administrator. Like so, a role of type user role. Then we're going to have another type called equipment. Uh, equipment. Uh, it's going to have a name. It's going to have a description. No, rather details. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, let's see what's the other things blah 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 should be able to see if it's available uh, yeah so it has a rate it has a rate start day Which I actually think I wanted to find that too. So, rate start day. Ooh, it's a bit weirdly named, but sure. Uh, first or second. That's to support a days for now. So, rate start day. What did I call it in the previous one? Uh, let's see, types. Exactly the same. <laughs> and then it has a rate, yep. Yeah, and yeah, there's uh, like a, um, Uh, they a limit of how many days you're able to to rent it. So rent duration limit, which is also an int. So those are the two main types. Then there's the associated type, kind of which is the reservation, which is like the unification of those two concepts. So it has a user, a type user. Um, what, what's the name of the one making the reservation? Reserver? <laughs> I don't think that's a real, uh, real word. Equipment. It has a start date, an end date, uh, yeah. and it also has a comment because that's something that was in the original analog solution that they use today or presently. Yeah. So the next one is we should create some functions, I think. So let's create a file for functions. And they should these should probably like represent like the actions that you want to do. So quite simply, there should be like a login function. Login which takes a username and a password, I guess. Uh, 
and uh, let's just uh, return like a unit for now. This should probably uh, what's the is it semicolon? No, no, no. Uh, oh, what's the syntax for a comment again? Is it this? Nope. <laughs> That's SQL. <laughs> uh, it's something different. Oh, come on. Uh, is it just double slash? Oh, right. Okay. So it's still CSL slashes? Yeah, it is. Okay. I don't know why I figured it was something else. Okay. Um... So should I mention like uh, get the user and validate password? Return user. Uh, return user. So in theory, this should return like a user object of some, of some kind. Uh, remove unexpected argument. Okay. Uh, or maybe I don't. I, I don't actually need to. No, I don't want to do any of that. It's not a valid expression. Records must include at least one field. Empty sequences are specified by using seek empty or empty list. Right. Oh man. I thought I would be able to just do like this to like kind of ensure. Nope, not at all. Okay. So can I only create types by by like specifying? Yeah. Seems like it. Okay. I just kind of want to want to help with with creating a user object, but that appear, appears not to be. Well, it does help me like this though. There is like a hair or something in my eye, and it's. Blah. Uh. Yeah, let's just do like a dumb, some dummy data here. <laughs> uh, nope. I think it's phone number. Um, password, it's probably gonna be some kind of hash, but um, this is a password. No one can tell me different. Uh, what's the last thing for, uh, yeah, role. Uh, so role is gonna be user role, uh, user, maybe. At least it's, that means that login returns the right type. Oh, th that hair is annoying me. The next action mentioned in the Spec is um, needs to log in. Should display all the equipment. So I guess get equipment. Which basically just uh, get equipment, and that should return at, in the end a list of equipment. Which also has a name. Uh, let's just use one of these examples that they have. Nail gun, small pneumatic, new, pneumatic details. Uh, it doesn't have any. Well, that was not very interesting. 
Oh, are these not actually details? Are they just... Okay, those are not details at all. Oh, well, maybe we don't need a details thing. Let's go back to equipment and just remove that line. There we go. Uh, it has a rate. Uh, it is... So I, I'm thinking of recording the rates in... It looks like they're using just like whole kroner. But I want to... I think I actually want to record it in... Uh, in like Eure, which is... A hundredth of krona. Yeah. Rate start day is rate start day dot second. And the rent duration limit is probably, I think it's four or five days. There was another document too, which specified some other stuff. Yes, yes. Well, actually, there is some details on the... Okay, now, you know what? We're, we're going to keep the thing. We'll bring it back. Details. They are empty for this, but they might be. there might be something. Uh, okay. So, let's grab another one of these, just to have something to play with. Uh, let's do one of the other ones. Uh, something quite... Okay. Wood, splitter, petrol. I think you mean gas. Uh, let's see... These should all be the same, yeah. Hmm. Let's just change it up. For, uh, change it up a bit. So let's make this two hundred a day. You have to do pay at once. You can only lend for two days at, uh, at a time. For some reason. So that's the second, like, requirement action that I can see. Uh. When they use select an equipment or tool, I can do yeah. So that's just like the UI. Uh, some of the equipment are free. Yep, that's covered. Da, 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 da. There should be it should allow the administrator to import users. Okay, import users. Ooh, come on, writer. Why are you? Good night. It was going. It was a nice stream. Keep it up. Thank you. Good night. That was a really poorly read message. Good night. It was a nice stream. Keep it up. Well, thank you. Yeah. Import users. Um, users CSV, I think. Uh, parse CSV. Add users. And then return like, uh, I think it's just okay. Yeah. The administrator should be able to limit how many days it's possible to rent some of the equipment. Yep, we got that covered. Should be able to add or remove equipment, right? So let add equipment, um, which begs the question: How do we create new equipment? Should this function accept like individual the in, the individual things that we need to create equipment, like the name, the details, the rate, etc., or should it just add request the Com uh, equipment st st struct a uh, record rather directly uh, I think we actually just accept it directly yeah so equipment um, then we're just gonna 
uh, store equipment like so and then we're just gonna return we're actually gonna return it back the thing that you just stored um, because it won't it, it'll now have like an database ID maybe or some other kind of um, data that we might want ah that's actually a good a good point should these no they should not <laughs> um, these are not the database thingies they should probably have the IDs still though you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. They, they they should so we're gonna hmm are we gonna use like numbers for these or like uh what is it called in 64 yeah we should probably just use strings well actually what i actually want to use is a grid so let's just add this to all of these because that's what i am going to do anyways at some point uh id equals squid Good. The new good. Yeah, let me see. There we go. For this, for this. Oh. And lastly, for this. Everyone's happy. Um. Uh, yeah, add equipment. Um, there should be one for remove equipment. Yep, equipment. Should it take like a whole equipment or just like the ID of the equipment? Equipment ID remove equipment with ID. Then we're just going to return an OK. Um, and then there are a few reports that they want to run. Um, or which employees is lending slash renting specific equipment? So does that mean like I, I'm 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 interpreting that as I want they want to be able to see who's renting equipment and what are they renting and vice versa. So let's call this um Current, no, oh, current, um, current renting report. Get current renting report. Uh, get reservations uh, active today <clears throat> and I think we're just going to return those reservations actually so that's going to have a have like a user, no, I was going to, re, re, uh, re. <laughs> did we call it something funky in this one or did we just call a user? For server, <laughs> still, not, still not convinced that's a real word. For server, 
that's going to be a user of some kind and we're just going to be lazy and copy this from over here like so uh, we need to indent this a bit there we go why is it complaining the server is not defined i think a of that's not what i've written here though at all wow what wait what Reserver. Wow. That was not at all what I had written. Uh, let's see. Uh, what's the next thing? Equipment, of course. Equipment. Yep. Got that covered. Uh, sure. Let's go with this one. No. We were, we've already used that one. Let's use this one instead. There we go. Indent that a bit. Then we've got start and end date and then comment in the end. Start date, date time, um, blah, 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 blah. Date time now. Subtract, rather, add days equal to minus one. Uh, let's just do the same thing just for end date now, but then this time we're going to add one. So we're in the middle of the lending period comment. Uh, I'll have it back by 5 p.m. And that's going to be the only equipment that's uh, lent out today because I don't want to do that one more time. <laughs> He's complaining about something. No assignment of ID. That is correct. Let's uh, do one of those. And there we go. Now it's happy. Uh, so that's that one in the cam. How much individual employees owe the company to be used when charging them? Get. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Get credit due report. Ooh. Get past reservations. Ooh. Uh, get past uh, unsettled reservations. Yes, yeah, so that means probably that the reservation should be. is settled. I think, um, I think like, um, I think that this is not the optimal way to do it. It should probably be like an unsettled reservation or like a, like a settled reservation maybe and like a separate type. I, I think that's what um, the book recommends, the domain modeling made functional. But I don't remember the details, so let's get back to uh, Let's circle around to it later. <laughs> uh, blah, 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 blah. Get the thingamajig. Uh, let's just copy this. Put it in here. Uh, but instead, we're now going to set the start date to like something three days ago. This was two days ago. Let's complain about this. Needs to be float. Oh, okay. That's fine. Uh, 
There we go. Uh, yeah. And that's basically the requirements expressed in code, actually. That's interesting. There are some helper functions that need to kind of like fill out the details here, but basically this is it. That is interesting. Hmm. Okay, um, I think I'm gonna end it there. I've been doing this for about one and a half hours now. It's getting quite late, uh, so it's time to um, hit the bed, I think. Uh, let's just commit this. Um, what did I... I? Oh, I think it crashed. <laughs> there we go. Um... Add, um, add types and functions. Um, defined in spec. Yeah. Adds the types and functions mentioned in the specification there we go should probably read a bit about the book uh read a bit in the book again um i haven't done that in a while at least a year and um get back into it and see <clears throat> how to properly do this so in in ideally this logic part should just care about how the types are defined in the by the domain so these types should only be uh or it should only represent different uh or, or it should represent how the domain thinks or how the domain actually works then there's going to be a separate part like another project in the solution where the database access for example will be handled or at least the storage layer. So that won't be tightly coupled with this logic right here. Uh, so the business logic can be kept separate in an attempt to make it more testable, easier to separate when, uh, it's easier to, to, um, to reason about where code should go and it will be trivial to integrate it with a Web project later but it could also just as easily be integrated with something else if that was a desire anyway that's it for now i think um i hope to uh work some more on this after i've read a bit in, uh, in the uh, in the book yeah uh, yeah that's for now i think i am um, i hope to see you next time snuck